For a small amount of time now, I've been working on a, a video to call out The Verge on some of their ridiculous reporting on Microsoft products and other things. Now, usually I don't post this sort of thing and I don't like trash talking videos, but, you know, looking at some of their recent articles, we're going to see one here now, they're not below it themselves and they're supposed to be reputable tech journalists, whereas I'm just a guy, I work for a living, occasionally post some videos, and just thought it was going to be a bit more of a gentleman than that, but hey, screw it, if they're going to drop the bar this low, let's talk about how The Verge is dead. Back in the early days of The Verge, you had stalwarts like Joshua Topolsky. He was a very opinionated man. He was quite passionate about stuff, a bit of banter, but he knew his, he generally knew his stuff. Nowadays, it's just lines and lines of people just pushing out turds, article after article. The Verge refused a snail. Ten reasons why force touch is better than AIDS. iPhone, 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 iPhone. Oh, we kind of like Android a bit too. One of the main tactics of The Verge is to find something in a product, say for example, the wobble on the Surface Book screen, and they will go for it lengths to explain to you why this is such a big problem that you could never use this device. Hey guys, I'm here with GMR Tech looking at the latest MacBook. When I touch the screen, nothing happens. Where's the touch screen? And look, it wobbles. It wobbles like crazy. I could never use this device. And here we have in the next scene a guy clearly not used to using a touch screen. Trying to open, close, manage tabs. You know, little hint here. Control T opens a tab. That's quite nice. And, you know, there's also a trackpad on the device. And the virtual use videos like this just showing you how impossible it is to use a device and how awkward. When clearly we've seen with many Ultrabooks, it is not. So here I am with my legs really high up, uh, yep, this is a standard part of all our reviews, uh, a couple of points off there, and you know, just to uh, see if I could just push it as far away from me as possible, that's definitely another part of our reviews. Now one of the other things of this non-Apple product that The Verge classed as a major issue was the fulcrum hinge, the wonderful hinge gap, which gives you a nice little separation between the screen and the keyboard. And apparently it's Microsoft's fault if you're a hobo and you have a little stuff in your bag that gets stuck in the hinge. Now you could put your screen and your keyboard flush, but of course you might have this sort of problem here, which, you know, that makes your lovely beautiful device look amazing. Now say what you will about the fulcrum hinge, some like the design, some do not, but if you are getting dirt in your keyboard, don't blame your own bad personal hygiene on Microsoft and then deduct points from them. Thankfully on the Vergecast where the Surface Book was released, we had Joanna Stern, the tech journalist from Wall Street Journal, shouting down the hype council, or I guess fashion council you should call them. There's one thing that just really shows me how far off the Verge have gone from what they used to be back in the old days of Josh. But anyway, it was good to have someone there to point out some of the, well, things presented as absolute fact that maybe weren't. Uh, yeah, wait, so you got no stuff stuck in your computer. You got no Tom, stuff stuck in there? Tom is no. like, I got stuff in this thing for what, days. What do you, what do you in have in your bag, I already have a dirty bag. I, I pre needs to clean it out. Well, I, oh, I definitely get I have a very dirty bag, too. That's that. Uh, I guess while having a dirty bag, yeah, I think that's Microsoft's fault. Definitely got to remove a few points from their review. And don't even get me started on any review that is not an iPhone. I mean, the Android community, they get it pretty bad for sure. But the Windows Phone community, there's more factual inaccuracies and ignored details than Tony Blair's recollection of the Iraq war. Which brings us to the latest example of increasing lazy journalism, a general verbal diarrhea which is being produced on this site, Lumia 950 Review. The majority of the complaining comments in this article, yes, article, there was not enough detail to call this review, was that there were no camera samples, no battery reviews, and in both instances it just said it was okay, but provided no proof whatsoever. They even scored the camera less than the iPhone. I can't put it any better than this comment here from whatever you call Phone 7, saying Windows Phone used to be criticised for being behind with the specs, but now it's got a battery that you would expect in late 2015, when this article was written, that's a 7. I mean, 3,000 milliamp hours. That's pretty big. iPhone 1700. Ugh, I don't even. And they also stated that the photo quality wasn't any better than you would get in another device. So they gave that an 8. Now they gave the iPhone a 10. I mean, seriously. If you were just to look at facts, Lumias have always had great cameras, with the Zeiss lens and all the other stuff, pure view, blah blah blah. It's been the mainstay of Windows Phone for some time now, and just to go ahead and just not provide any proof is absolutely ludicrous. The thing is, at the end of the day, you don't even really need to do your own research. You can just head over onto GSM Arena, they've got this amazing tool, and you can just look, and you can look around, and they've got these standardised charts, and you can see, like, on the iPhone, looking at pencils and other things, it's like a watercolour. The details are just washed out, this just are not on par whatsoever. But regardless of this clear independence evidence, it's an 8 and not a 10. And now each paragraph long by paragraph long opinion article, written by junior office hipsters all drinking the Kool-Aid, goes further and further away what used to be a biased but interesting website, just crawling ever closer to being the cesspit of the internet.